Hello, everyone. Depending on where you're calling in from, good morning and good afternoon. Uh, welcome to today's webinar session on e-bonding, a refresher on what it is and how it works. Uh, today's session is targeted to sureties, brokers, and contractors, who are also referred to as principals and bidders. My name is Sharon Clark Kufis, and I'm the Director of Membership and Stakeholder Services at the Surety Association of Canada. I will also be the moderator for today's session. Uh, the session is presented in partnership by Merck's, Mobile Bonds, Xenix Enterprises, and the Surety Association of Canada. Now, I can tell you that today's webinar is being recorded and will be made available shortly after the session on the SAC website under eBonding and will also be sent out by email to those in attendance for your reference. Everyone on the webinar is muted except for our presenters. So if you should have any issues at all during the session, uh, please feel free to send me a note directly through the chat, which appears in your webinar panel. I also just want to bring your attention to the fact that we are going to have a question and answer period at the, cl at the close of today's session. So should you have any questions throughout the presentation, I'd like to direct you to submit them to the questions panel. Um, and just a reminder to press the button send in order for it to get loaded up. And we will definitely take care of those at the close of today's session. Today's agenda is noted on the screen and uh, will be as follows. We're gonna do just a really quick introduction and then we're gonna get into what is an e-bond? Uh, what is a digital bond, including some samples? Uh, we're gonna conduct an overview of the process to get an e-bond, including requesting an e-bond, submitting an e-bond and e-bond verification. Uh, Merck's is then gonna provide an overview of their e-bid submission process. And then we're gonna close off today with the, the Q&A. I'd like to now um, ask you to please provide me with the opportunity to introduce you to our presenters. Uh, so Steve Ness has been the president of the Surety Association since 1994. He is one of the original founders of the association and began his career in the surety industry in 1977. Uh, Steve has broke, spoken on suretyship in both North America and Europe, including lectures for the University of Toronto and the Insurance Institute of Canada on the role of suretyship in the construction process. We also have Loris Haig, who is founder, CEO, and president of Xenix Enterprises. Uh, founded in 1983, Xenix designs, develops, and hosts enterprise class software solutions to unleash unique business value propositions and sustainably, sustainability uh, enhance competitiveness and profitability. Uh, Loris was a key driver in pioneering uh, e-bonding solutions in Canada. We also have Isabel Moroni, who is the Marketing Communications Manager at Merck's. Uh, she's a musician turned marketer, and she's very passionate about how storytelling and targeted messaging uh, creates business changing content. And in her role, she's responsible for implementing outbound marketing strategies that allows Merck's to increase brand awareness, generate leads, and acquire new customers. And we also have Steve Muxlow, who is the president of Mobile Bonds. With more than 25 years working in the Canadian surety industry, uh, Steve created and operates mobile bonds to help people do the bond business better. So thank you to our presenters for joining us today. So now I'm going to hand over the presentation to Steve Ness, who is going to kick things off with our introduction. Steve? Thanks, Sharon. Uh, afternoon, everyone, or good morning as the case may be. Um, just a very uh, brief summary of who we are, uh, I guess more for those on the contracting side who may not be familiar with us. We're the national voice, uh, advocacy voice of the surety industry uh, from coast to coast. Um, our members include uh, everyone who uh, is anything to do with surety, uh, the surety companies, reinsurers, brokers, and other organizations like uh, surety specialist law firms, consultants, and so on. Uh, our members are responsible for 97% of all the surety premiums written in Canada, so pretty much everyone is a member of our organization. Um, next one. Uh, now, e-bonding, you're, you're going to hear an awful lot about it. Um, 
uh, I guess Laura, Steve, and Isabel are going to give you the guts of it. But the reasons are somewhat self-evident. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a savings of time uh, over the traditional uh, paper world of issuing, uh, uh, preparing and issuing bonds. Uh, your chances of uh, errors, uh, which can result in non-compliant tenders, is greatly diminished uh, because of the nature of the, the beast themselves. And uh, Laura and Steve will explain that to you. Uh, cost savings, of course, uh, with uh, the savings on issuance, delivery, and so on. And the uh, our carbon footprint, or relative lack thereof, uh, it is green. Uh, we're not killing any trees to do this. And finally, uh, as I say here, it's easy. And, you know, again, you're going to hear a lot about the uh, the process and uh, the, the, the guts of how it all goes down and happens. And for those of you who are new to it, it, it may at first appear daunting, but this is not conceptually difficult stuff. It's not complicated. Uh, however, it is different. It'll be a different way of, of doing your job. And like anything else, when you change the way you do something, um, there'll be a few hiccups coming out of the gate, perhaps a, a bit of a learning curve. But once you get through that, I think you're going to find that the benefits that we're talking about here will very quickly become apparent. Next. Uh, now, what's our role in all this at the Surety Association? Uh, and, and actually, that role has changed in the last five years or so. Um, I guess our primary role is to educate uh, those of you who are involved in it, like what we're doing today, hosting education sessions, webinars. Um, sometimes we do one-for-one uh, -one sessions with individual organizations. Uh, we also provide resources. If you go to our website, you can find uh, uh, all kinds of material to uh, uh, enhance your familiarity with this. We have a position paper on it. We have a guide to the vendors that are out there, like the uh, the two gentlemen that are represented here today. We look at their systems and see what they uh, what their systems can do and uh, and what they can't do. Um, our also also our, our primary role, uh, I would think, is that of facilitator, and that role has changed in the last five years. Um, some of you, particularly out in Western Canada, may recall uh, about five years ago. Uh, major public owner uh, just leaped out of the gate and announced on Tuesday that on the following Monday they were going to go live with electronic tendering uh, without telling a soul in advance and we all had better be ready or else. And uh, it created uh, quite a disturbance and uh, to their credit they were uh, amenable to working with us and we pushed the date back a little bit and we got things ready. Uh, those days are gone. Uh, I would say as, as we sit here on February 13, 2020, from the perspective of our industry at least, pretty much everyone who's seriously engaged in the surety business in Canada will have familiarity with the with the e-bonding process and uh, what, what's available out there and, and be able to uh, provide an electronic bond. Um, among the other uh, among the other ways we do facilitate is is putting you in touch with the right people. If you have questions, we will answer them. Uh, for owners, uh, we're happy to provide them with template uh, language to put in their tender documents to ensure that they get a proper e bond provided to them uh, f for their tenders. And as always, we encourage you to visit our website. Uh, there's the link there, suretycanada.com. Uh, again, lots of information about e-bonding and anything else surety for that matter. So again, welcome and uh, back to you, Sharon. Great. Thank you so much, Steve. Uh, so now we're going to hand it over to the other Steve, uh, Steve Muxlow, and he's going to continue on with the presentation. Steve? Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, <clears throat> thanks. Thanks, Steve. So uh, w what is an e-bond is, uh, is the question I'm uh, going to tackle. And you can see that it's uh, we're, we're talking about a, a, a digital file that, that's got some uh, information that's embedded inside it. But kind of before I, I get started, just going back to some of Steve's earlier points that the industry actually spent a, a fair bit of time, even before really the technology and even the demand for e-bonds uh, even came about. Um, and so what they the industry did was set a uh, create a set of guidelines in terms of 
what the the, <clears throat> the bond is all about, and it's consulted with um, you know industry stakeholders from the construction uh, group as well as from from project owners. And through all those comments, were were distilled into those those guidelines, which you can see summarized uh, below, where it talks of uh, the integrity of the document. The idea is is you know once you've issued a, a digital bond, it, it can't be changed. Um, the use of digital signatures, so as opposed to a handwritten signature. Um, this digital signature will, will carry with it um, certain specific technical information that gets embedded into the document. And that applies to as well as the, the digital seals. And <clears throat> that, again, is really trying to uphold sort of the principles of the actual bond business of just having documents that are signed and sealed. And of course, uh, you know, depending on which jurisdiction you are, those seals may or may not be, be required. And then the, the last sort of big block is, is the acknowledgement acknowledgement of the intent uh, and I think really what that means to me is is that it's um, you know that the parties that are part of the the, that the process are, are the ones that actually intended to, to do it as opposed to leaving it to um, you know a machine or algorithms to uh, to take care of it um, uh, automatically so maybe we'll move over to the next slide so in part of those requirements that uh, that were set up um, just some some key points. Um, one, it's it's you know, the actual bond itself has to be viewable, printable, saved, um, and you'll find is that they're created in, uh, and transmitted into PDF, which is a, a universal format that everybody can can accommodate. Uh, the verification piece is one, a requirement that was sort of driven out by by the owner community, making sure that you know the documents that that got issued. Are actually sorry. The documents that they actually received are the actual the same ones that uh, were actually issued out of whatever system that was that produced them. And then, <clears throat> sort of the second part of that verification piece is is just being able to to uh, have an online way of quickly and easily uh, verifying that those documents um, are in fact um, correct. So you're probably wondering as well with all this technology is just you know, what does this bond look like? I mean, we're all, or most of us, probably accustomed to using paper bonds and handwritten signatures and, uh, you know, those manual seals. And I suspect there might even be some people on the phone in this business, in the surety industry that can go back even farther to, to maybe even wax seals. Uh, that might be a little bit overreaching. But uh, so uh, if we move to the next slide, I'll just show you what the bond looks like or a sample of a bond. And it's probably underwhelming to, to see it, but it essentially is, is um, it's the same same document. It's just going to be in an electronic or a digital media format in PDF, and you can see that the the signatures and seals are just in the um, are digitally signed and sealed, as opposed to uh, a handwritten signature um, and those manual seals. So the the idea is is we're trying to maintain um, what we've always done in the business. And we're just all we're trying to do is, is just to uh, continue to do that uh, just in an online digital environment. So I'm going to uh, jump off here and, and turn it over to Laura, who's going to talk a little bit more about the difference between a, a digital bond and an electronic bond. Lors. Okay, thank you, Steve. Um, can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. Uh, in a lot of cases, uh, when somebody talks about a digital bond versus an electronic bond, there's uh, usually a little bit of a confusion, even though um, the two terms are uh, used uh, interchangeably. Uh, the, the, the basic requirement uh, of a what we call an e-bonding is really what we call a digital bond. What is the difference between the two of them? The two of them is what basically Steve mentioned earlier, and that is the verification process and the ability to verify it. So, for example, an electronic bond is technically nothing else but a document that can be electronically uh, transmitted versus the digital bond is a document that can be electronically transmitted and electronically verified for its authenticity. Uh, and and uh, there are three basic requirements, as Steve was mentioning. There is for it to be valid. Uh, the first one is the the intent, uh, the the identity of the individual that signed it has to be verified. 
Uh, the second one is what the intent to sign, as you mentioned before in the in the uh, in the previous slides. And the third one is uh, specifically that the document has not been altered, which is the integrity of the document, which has not been uh, uh, altered during and after the signing process. That's what technically, in, according to the E-Commerce Act, the definition of a digital uh, signed document. And the bond is a, a one step more secure than what the e-commerce says and because of the fact that it also has the seal in addition to the signature now now if you look at the, both these two signatures the question becomes they look very similar can i go to the next slide please if you look at this document the actual seal is shaded and this is a scanned copy and what this is not what you call a digital signature even though they call it this is not an e-bonding a scanned pdf document it's a it's it's a technically a picture of 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 the actual bond itself of the document so when you print the doc, the digital document and or when you scan it all the digital uh, uh code that it's inside the or the uh the, the magic that's inside the document that makes it verifiable all disappears because it becomes a picture of it. So the second one, what, a, what, a, what an e-bonding is not, it's not a single blanket bond or a single blanket commitment that basically covers every single bid or every single contract. Okay, It needs to be individually to each particular contract, which is the same way you currently do it with the paper world no different than that and the third thing is it is not a digital number that you basically give to someone to say here it is go verify it the reason for that is because none of these verify the content of the document okay so i can basically give you some kind of a verification of the word but you don't know if the document content has been altered okay now let's go to the next slide please as you can see, I blew it up to find out that this is a mechanically sealed document. Like in the old days, we used to do that. And then what we do is we shade it to make sure that the seal shows up. Okay, That's not what we call an e-bond. Can I go to the next uh, slide, please? A very wise man, I'm not really sure he's uh, with us on this webinar. His name was Steve Ness. Once told me, he said, you give me a picture of a bond. I will give you back a picture of money, which means the, the document being scanned or not verifiable is not a valid bond, okay? It, from the e-bonding perspective. Now, let's go to the next slide. This is the way a digital signature looks like. As you can see, the seal is a little bit more crisp, and then the document itself and the signature is a little bit different now nothing says in here that it needs to be like that that could be the actual physical signature of an individual that scanned and uploaded the system and it shows but this is what you call an adopted signature so it is okay for people to adopt a signature which means the the, the, the you create the system creates it and you basically uh, accept it as being your signature moving forward okay and this is the way a digital signature would look like okay can we have the next slide now what is the process when we were doing a lot of the conversation with multiple different um, stakeholders uh, and this was back a long long time ago during the initiation we made sure that the current process is not which is the paper flow process is 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 not totally changed and impacted so the process we maintained it the same way the way an owner will basically prepare the actual uh, request uh, for bid then they will upload it to a bidding system or for some kind or publish it in one way or the other through a system now the vendor or the contractor will then download that information or look at that information and gather a lot of inf a lot of what the requirements are one of the requirements of the bid documents 
is basically what you call the bit security. In there, the owner will be describing what kind of a bond it is and, <clears throat> and, and what, whether it's a digital or it is not. The wording for that document, in most of the cases, it is basically if you call the uh, Surety Association of Canada, they'll be able to, that's what Steve Ness was talking about, they, they, they will be able to provide you with the wording of, of that particular document. And that is not a legal uh, document that uh, they're going to give me, it's a guideline, so you need to really vet it with your own legal department as an owner, okay, before you put it up. So the gist is there. It is a variation of whatever their legal department decided, they're going to put it in their wording. But the basic uh, guidelines are available through the Surety Association of Canada. When the actual vendor or contractor or the bidder downloads the documents, they know there's a bond. The same way as a paperwork, they're going to contact, which is step number three, their broker or their agent say, this is the kind of bond that I want. Most of the brokers, at this point, the majority of the brokers, um, if not all of them, are familiar with the process of what is it required. And they know that sometimes, if it's a paper bond they require, or there's a, or there is a, an electronic or a digital bond that, that it's required, whatever it's required, they know. If they don't know, they ask questions or request the, the bid documents to make sure they understand what kind of bond it is. If they do have the authority for the bond, which in the majority of the cases they do in the form of a, an authority given to them by the, by the surety, they will produce the product and or have it ready. And that is the request part cycle, life cycle of the process. It is no different than what currently takes place in the paper, uh, in the paper uh, uh, process. Can I have the next slide? The difference starts from here, and if you follow the green path, that's where the difference runs. In the traditional paper world, world the, the broker will basically produce the document, somehow seal it, and sign it on behalf of the surety, or the surety will produce it, sign it, and give it to the, bro to, to, to the broker. The broker would then courier it to the contractor, or the contractor will go pick it up, okay? And there's a lot of, in a lot of cases, traffic gets involved, all sorts of things. And the reality of the matter is, is that in most cases, in the bid uh, scenario, our experience has been that it's, it's very, very stressful because it's mostly last minute. You got few hours to look at the bond. You've been spending weeks or months writing the proposal, and then at the last minute you remember, oh, I need a bond. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have experienced that. So now what happens is that instead of the courier service, the broker uploads the actual bond before it's signed and sealed into the actual e-bonding system, which is uh, either mobile bond or ourselves, which is Signature Master. Then from there, each system has a way of basically inviting the uh, contractor and having them sign the document, okay? From there on, the, the document is, is, after everything is completed, it's downloaded back to the, to the contractor or the vendor. They, in turn, upload it into the bidding system, such as Merck's, and they upload it in there. At the closing time, Merck's makes the document together with all of the other documents available to the owner. Okay. Now, can we have the next slide? After at the closing or after the closing, the the owner or the obligee, when they take they find that document, then they have the ability to verify it and to authenticate it for the 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 original to to to, to verify that the people who that, that that document is a valid document. Okay, can I have the next? Which is the red uh, arrow? Now this is the verification process for uh, the mobile bonds. So what you do is you click a link, you go there, you upload the document, and it comes back and says, yes, this is valid. And we have the next page. And this is the Signature Master uh, model of the verification. If the, if the model passes, you get the actual screen on the right. That means it's valid. If the actual bond 
fails, it goes to the actual screen. Uh, uh, sorry, I got it mixed up. If it fails, it's the one on the right. If it's successful, it's the one on the, uh, on the left, okay? Now, this verification process not only verifies the actual signature, but it also verifies the, the, the content being the valid one, okay? Can I have the next slide? I think after that, I'll pass it on to Steve back again. Great, yep. So Steve uh, Muxlow, we're gonna hand it over to you. Great. Okay, so um, so really we've we're talked about kind of the industry requirements, um, dug into a little bit of details between the uh, difference between digital and electronic bonds. And sort, of the, sort of the practical questions as well. So how do you, how do you get set up in the systems? And so looking at the, uh, the slide, you've, I've broken it into the two columns. And so if we start on the right-hand side with the broker and the bonding agency, uh, as Steve Nesson mentioned earlier, um, the industry is mostly uh, already in the systems uh, now. So it, that, that part's fairly straightforward. They might be adding um, uh, some new people in their organizations, um, or there might be some brokers that uh, have some clients that are just starting to get some demand for, for e-bonds. And <clears throat> so that's uh, so that, that, that more or less the industry is ready. Um, and if we look at sort of on the vendor and contractor side, really each system is a little bit different, but I think the, the key points are is, is really just, you know, uh, reaching out to, to either system uh, and getting your organization set up, um, obtaining your, your digital corporate seal, uh, and then <clears throat> establishing a link between yourself and your, your bonding partners. Um, and the, the last point <clears throat> is really just give yourself some, some time to complete. Uh, to, to actually get yourself set up. Um, and you'll see sort of in the next slide, uh, Sharon, I think is the FAQ in terms of time. Could you advance to the next slide? Yeah, so I, in terms of how long that, that time is to, to set up the account, uh, you know, the, the slide's saying 30 minutes, but uh, certainly in my, my experience, and probably I'm sure Loris can, can acknowledge it as well, is, is uh, it really is going to depend on how comfortable the, the person is, is A, just using technology. Um, and then, you know, I've, I've had some people get through the system probably faster than I can now. <clears throat> and I've got some other people that, that maybe a little less um, comfortable with, with working with computers and they, they just take a little bit longer. So, um, you know, 30 minutes plus or minus probably 20 minutes or so and you, you can get yourself set up. So on the next question, I believe is, so if your broker's not ready, um, you just have them uh, reach out to Dolores or I, and we can quickly get them set up into the system. And I think uh, that's, is that it for me? Yep, great. Thank you so much, Steve. So now we're gonna hand it over to Isabel at Mertz. Isabel, you're up. Thank you, Sharon, and you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you fine. Great, thank you. Okay, great. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I think that uh, at this point, everyone understands that the e-bonding process happens outside of the Merck's world, but it's often a part of the procurement process. So whether or not a bond is required when you're responding to an opportunity that's found on Merck's, you'll get to the point where you need to submit your bid electronically through the system. Now, you would know if the submission uh, process for that specific opportunity is done electronically through our system by reading through the tender documents or through the opportunity abstract uh, when you're on Merck. So it'll it'll be notified, it'll be um, indicated within the op opportunity abstract. Now the buying entity or the buyer will receive your submission through the Merck system and then for the purpose of today's example uh, we're going to be working with an EBID submission, which is the fast, highly secure, and fully audited environment. Now, this is also very common. I know that, I think it was Loris that mentioned it earlier, um, how it's the idea of going paperless and touching on reducing carbon footprints all over the place. So this is also a part, uh, our part in it as well by doing electronic tendering. Um, so within Merck's, there's a 32 dollar uh, fee plus tax to submit a bid per opportunity and you can make changes to your submission right up to the closing date and time uh, but you'll only pay for the one time for that opportunity. Uh, 
submissions are also less prone to error as you can control what is uploaded through the through your account and then of course there's no geographical or weather related disadvantages um, i know it's snowing a lot here in ottawa today and i wouldn't want to be trying to hurry up and get a document physically uh, to a buying organization uh, the buyer won't have access to your bid or any of your documents until after uh, the closing date and time and so this is one of the processes that keeps things open fair and transparent for all bidding organizations um, uh, here at Merck's we do have a lot of tutorials that are available on the whole process so if you do uh, wanted to learn a little bit more about um, our eBid process which I will go through in the next few slides um, you can also look at the tutorials so it's simply on Mercs, you can click, there's a link there, or you can use the link that's available on the screen. Um, and we do offer monthly webinars that do give you a little bit more in-depth information on how to use Mercs. Next slide. So let's cover the process. Uh, once you've found an opportunity of interest, you'll download the tender documents and the instructions will include the information about the bonding requirements within the tender documents. Now, in this case, you'll need to go through the process as mentioned earlier uh, by Loris. He kind of showed that grid that has all the arrows going everywhere. So when you get into the Mercs part of it, you'll need to make sure that the individual from your organization that will be submitting the bid has the proper roles and privileges with their Mercs account. And if you're unsure of that, you can always give us a call. We have a 1-800 number, which we'll see it in another slide coming up and um, they'll be able to help you make sure that you have the proper role and privileges. Now when you're ready to submit your bid you'll include your digital bond document and you'll see that there's a special space just for that. Um, you'll log into your Merck's account and go through the simple four-step process and we're going to go through those in the next few slides but I just want to make sure to advise you and remind you just like Loris did or I think it was Steve sorry make sure that you take the time to do all of your e-bond uh, requirements in advance because that will take 30 minutes but also you want to take the time before you start uploading your documents into the Merck system especially if you have many documents or large file size documents because you don't want to miss that closing date and time that could be the difference between you um, losing out on a bid or being completely disqualified so keep an eye on that when you're in the Merck system we do have the timer which is in the top right hand corner so you can kind of see how much time you have left and always make sure that you use the resources that are available on the surety association of canada website which is on the screen and the next screen or the next slide is how you can contact us. So we have a call center that's open Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time. Um, our, our representatives are bilingual, so if you need assistance in French as well, so you just call our 1-800 number or email us at mercs at mercs.com. Now let's go through the process through the screenshot. So next slide. All right, so here we go. Um, once you've read through all of the tender documents, you'll have all the instructions that you need to know in order to get to the point of submitting your bid. So then you'll go back onto Mercs and you'll go find the opportunity that you're working with. And you'll start off uh, by clicking that place bid button that's in the top right hand corner. Click on that and then it'll enter you into the four step process for the bid submission. So next slide. Now, um, the behind screen, if you have a look, you can kind of see that there's the four-step process, proposal, submission, payment, and confirmation. So this is where you're going to upload your documents in the first step under proposal. So you'll see there that I've highlighted in yellow uh, that I have three documents that have been uploaded there. It's pretty simple. You can either drag and drop your, doc your files or you can do it the old fashioned way and click browse for your file and then you'll just select your files and upload them right then and there and the fun thing is is that when you click the next button it will take you over to the in this case this had a pricing tab so you can enter your pricing information there in some cases it will ask you within the tender documents to include a pricing document so in that case you would have added it through the documents tab uh, but you just really need to make sure you've read and understood all of the 
the requirements from the buying organization. So then I would click next here, so next slide. And then you'll see here that there's a section for the bid security. So this is where you would upload your uh, bid bond file that was spoken about previously. Simply click upload file and then you'll just select it and it will upload itself. Um, and you can see in the top right hand corner what I mentioned before, the time left to bid, your timer is available there. And then you'll simply enter your bidder compliance and authentication, which is your full name, and the password that you use to log in to your Merck's account. And then from here, you'll click on next, so the next slide, and then you'll just confirm that you want to go forward and proceed. So you'll click on the next, or sorry, the yes button, and then click, and then take me to the next slide. All right, and then this takes you to the payment process. So basically you'll put in your uh, credit card information and then go for the payment a process of the electronic bid submission and then you'll click on submit payment and then next slide and then you end up with the fourth step which is the confirmation that includes all the details of your submission so it has your name the exact date and time right up to the second of your submission and you get a confirmation number and you can print this for your records and this is also your receipt of payment for the electronic bid submission and then that's basically it uh, for the electronic bid submission. Now, thank you. Uh, the next thing to mention is you can always access our tutorials basically on every page of Merck's. There's a link to our tutorial. So if you're needing help, you can always contact our 1-800 number at any time during the process. So our agents are available to help you through the process because they can log in and see your account and help you through the process. Um, and like I mentioned before, we do monthly webinars on um, your experience using Mercs. So we have one next week on February 19th and the following one is in March on March 18th. Uh, feel free to go to mercs.com slash events and you'll be able to register there for one of those webinars. And I think that's all I have. Great, thank you so much Isabel. Thank you. So we kind of went through this presentation fairly quickly, um, but there's lots of good information there. And I'm just going to kind of check the questions panel here to see if we have any questions from anyone. Give me one sec. Okay. Uh, so Cindy is asking, is the $22 bid fee new? Does it apply to all bids? So Isabella, that's a question for you. The $32 fee is for um, one opportunity. So if you're submitting one bid to an opportunity, it'll be the $32 for that opportunity. If you decide to withdraw your uh, submission and then submit a new um, document or submission, you don't need to pay again for that specific opportunity. But for every opportunity that you're submitting a bid for, it's a $32 fee. Does that answer the question? I believe so. And Cindy, if, if that doesn't, please post another question and we'll, we'll direct that to Isabel. Uh, we do have a question here from Charles, uh, who's asking, how do you obtain a digital seal? So I'll open that up to any of the presenters who want to speak to that. In our case, uh, we, we uh, as, you're, uh, as you're registering, uh, uh, it's Laura Sake from uh, from Zenex, right, which is Signature Master. I, in our case, we are able to provide you with one. Uh, this is uh, a mobile bond. So it's uh, um, uh, we can do the same as well. Great, thank you. We have a question here from Daniel. Uh, he's asking, can you please address hybrid e bonds? Uh, I have done it before, where I start the bond in Zenex then the contractor seals it manually on their end, and uh, am I the only one doing this? Uh, the, 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 the answer to the question is, uh, is, unfortunately, a lot of the owners do um, dictate of what it is, and some of the, like most of them are digitally requesting it. Some of the owners, they're still requesting um, scanned versions, uh, they're getting less and less, more, uh, more of them. And uh, at the end of the day, I think 
it is not a digital, if that happens, that is not a digital bond. That's not an e-bond. That's a regular paper bond. Okay. Uh, Steve, any comments on that? No, I agree with you. It's, uh, I think uh, the, the, the days of hybrids are, are probably disappearing, although probably with maybe new owners that are coming online with e-procurement uh, might be baby stepping and, and you know, doing it in phases, but more or less it's-, it's, it's I remember the, yeah, Steve, I, I remember the days where the hybrids were were being used by some of the owners because they were concerned of of uh, of pushback from the um, uh, from the uh, contractor community or the principal community. Uh, our experience right now, uh, with a lot of the contractors we use, it is a little bit of an irritant for them because we hear it quite often. Why isn't everybody going that way from the from the contractor community, especially those who are using it? I don't know if you still can, Stevie, can share that thought. Sorry, Sorry. Steve, me, Steve, or Steve Ness? Steve, Steve uh, no, Steve uh, Moxlow. Moxlow. Yeah, I, I'm not sure sure why why people are doing it, but um, um, <clears throat> but I think eventually everybody, mostly everybody's doing digital documents now, and and you know the, the few the, the few that are doing the hybrid are are probably going to evolve to a digital. No, and, I, and I can share one of the reasons of us doing these webinars is really to provide a bit more education. So we actually have a session next Thursday, February the 20th, uh, for public owners and municipalities. Um, so we're encouraging them to, of course, to join the webinar because this will be information that will be very helpful for them in moving forward uh, in the digital e-bonding environment. Great. Okay, so we have a question here from Jacoba. Uh, do e-bonds need electronic signatures or seals after our surety company provides our e-bond? Um, <clears throat> I'm not really sure I fully understand it, so I'm going to try to answer that question. And if I did not answer it, please uh, clarify or do another question on that. The answer is from a from a from a conceptual perspective, depending on where you are. And Stephen Ness can basically confirm if I say something that is not correct. The um, the actual bond is a deed; it's not a contractual arrangement. As a result of that, it needs to be signed, sealed, and delivered. And the signing and signature and sealing in uh, most of Canada, except for Quebec, is supposed to be uh, from both parties the uh, the um, surety which is the uh, uh that is basically assuming the the guarantee and the the the, uh, the obligation and uh or a representative of the surety from the broker community where they have they have power of attorney authority to basically bind the surety so that's one party and it requires both a seal and a signature now the only exception to that is if the organization is not a, uh, a corporation. Uh, and uh, in that particular case, it's another scenario. But 99% of the time, the principal and the surety must sign and seal. If the principal is not a corporation, then usually a witness it may be required. At the end of the day, it matters on what the actual obligee is going to accept and what the surety company is going to accept. Correct me if I'm wrong in what I just said. Is that good? That's essentially correct. Yep. Okay. Remember, signed, filled, and delivered, just like the Stevie Wonder songs. Uh... <laughs> As we all break out in song here. <laughs> <clears throat> so we have another question here from Cindy. Uh, she's asking, is the fee new? Uh, I've bid through Mercs in the past and don't recall the fee. Is there an annual subscription that would cover the $32 bid fee instead of paying per submission? 
Okay, so for some of our buying organizations, they absorb that cost, so it's possible that you've come across that type of situation, but in most cases, the fee has been there for as long as I've been working here, which is close to 10 years, so I'm not sure, unless you have a um, an annual subscription to work with a specific organization. In that case, your electronic bid submission is included as well in that case. I'd, we'd have to look into your account to see um, in that case. So maybe the recommendation to Cindy is to call the 1-800 number and speak to a, a Merck representative. Sure, that works. Right, okay. Thank you. Uh, we have a question here from Justin. Uh, when uploading bonds at tender stage, so bid and agreement to bond, are they uploaded separately or as one document? Uh, I, I think that's probably a question for Isabel and all the vendor, but I can share our experience. It all depends on the system and the system is dictated by the owner. In the majority of the cases, some of them have two separate places, one for the bid bond, one for the consent to bond. In a lot of cases, they have only one places, at which point, depending on how the bond was originally, the e-bond was originally created, um, if the uh, majority of the systems accept a zip file. So if two documents were, pre were produced, okay, zip it and upload it uh, and there's only one place to upload it then a zip file should work uh, but before you go ahead and do it i would suggest that you confirm with the actual uh, bidding system and or the owner of um, how to do it this has been our experience if there are two documents and there are two do documents have been separately uh, created separately then you can upload it each one in the act actual place I hope I answered the question. Anybody else has anything to add to it? I'm probably Isabel. Um, well, from from the Merck's perspective, this is one of those things that would be uh, the instructions from the owner would hopefully include that sort of detail within their tender documents. Um, and if not, during the process between the time that you've downloaded the tender documents and the time to bid, uh, in some cases, you can ask questions to the owner. So within that situation, you could always ask that question to them directly. So that's always an option that's available. And that, of course, information would be found in those tender documents. Hopefully right. that helps round off the answer. Perfect. Great. Okay, we have a question here from Maria. Uh, she's done a quick review of Defence Construction Canada bonds and from Merck's notice to verification of the bond, is the final step uploading the bond onto Merck's site and completing the four steps? Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, oh my goodness, if memory serves me, I do believe so, but that is something that I would have to uh, look into a little bit more in depth with um, a colleague of mine. Uh, just because it's specific to uh, Defence Construction Canada. Okay, um, so, so they may have a specific way of doing, running their business. So I would have to look into that. Okay, so I'll make a note, Maria, that we'll get back to you on that, okay? Yes, thank you. Okay, we have a question here from Debbie. Are any of the owners moving towards digital final bonds? Yes, <laughs> they should. Yes. In my opinion, right. but <laughs> no, there there are there are um, uh, at a number of different school boards and municipalities that are accepting finals, uh, performance and payment bonds, and <clears throat> I think people uh, might might not be aware of it, but there are, are a number of owners that are are starting to do that as they move to completely paperless uh, procurement. Yeah, I, I concur with that. We have seen we have seen some, and it's on the increase. And one thing I can comment is, I know we've got a couple calls here at the uh, Surety Association in the past um, from folks that were not aware the final bonds could be produced in an e-digital format, and um, that's been available for quite some time now. Um, so we definitely, that's one of the reasons why we are trying to reach out to uh, project owners and municipalities 
uh, to encourage them to move it beyond just the tender stage and actually to, to create those final bonds. Okay, we have a question here from Tisha. Um, in regards to X and MB, are you able to increase the speed when uploading the new Ontario forms as sometimes get stuck or takes forever? So I think she's referring to the Construction Act of Ontario forms, perhaps. Or I guess there's a concern about the speed of uh, going into Xenix. Oh, I see. So in regards to Xenix and mobile bonds, are you able to increase the speed when uploading the new Ontario forms as sometimes they get stuck or they take forever? So maybe that's um, more of a, an offline question that we can look into. Yeah, and... I think the, if they call us, we'll try to find out and test it. It should not. That should not be, uh, there should not be a difference. <clears throat> but we need to identify why is that difference. So Tisha, what so we'll do is uh, the, there's right. actually a closing slide that has the contact information and we'll make sure we get that to you, Tisha, so that you can follow up with Xenix or mobile bonds directly. Uh, sorry, Steve, did I cut you off? Did you have a, a comment there? No, oh, I'm good. Okay. Uh, question from Sylvie. If the bond is submitted through Mercs, uh, if we issue for a tender closing on a certain date and it, it is extended, do we have to reissue another bond and change the date, or does the original bond we issued still good? Oh, uh, I think that 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 is that that's okay. Like it's still valid for that for that time. Um, wow, I don't even know the answer otherwise than that. Um, uh, that's another one I'll have to check. Okay, so we'll get back to Sylvie on I that think, one as well. I think that might be a preference, either by the contractor or by the owner. Yeah, it's re really not something that that any of our systems do, but it, it's really I think it's driven by you know, what the owner wants and what what the contractor prefers. Exactly, and I, I, ima I imagine that they would mention this if they're extending the date, then this would be a part of that extension. I, I can add a comment to that. Um, the uh, the word that this is not uh, a problem that's unique to uh, e-bonds. This is just bid bonds in general, because uh, tenders do get extended. And the current CCDC bond, the wording is a little bit confused, uh, confusing, but it does allow for tender extensions because it refers to the date of the bond. It doesn't refer to the specific date of the tender. Uh, CCDC uh, is about to come out with a new uh, bid bond, uh, the 2020 edition. We hope it's ready by the end of this year. It's, it's been approved by the committee, and that will resolve that issue so that when a tender is extended, that bond will automatically be extended to go along with the tender date. Okay. Um, <clears throat> our experience has been it's, it's very, very specific to the owner. Um, <clears throat> there are owners that say, okay, uh, that's fine. There are owners that say um, you need to change, to, to change it. And uh, the, the answer is depending, as Steve was mentioning, uh, it depends on the wording in the bond document. The CCDC document, the new one is going to come out. Uh, and um, some, uh, the, if, you, if you look at the, um, the um, Defense Construction Canada document, it says uh, from the date of closing. The, uh, the, so as a result of that, when you extend it, uh, it, technically what it does, it's effective from the date of closing. So uh, there, it's a question of wording more so than anything else. As Steve mentioned, Steve uh, Ness. That's good. That's good. Great. Thank you. Okay, so it looks like we've answered all the questions. Uh, one last call if anyone has another question that they'd like to ask before we wrap up. Okay, I'm not seeing anything here. So thank you to all of our presenters, uh, Steve Ness, Loris, Steve Muxlow, and Isabel. Um, really appreciate your time today and, and providing uh, this really uh, good information uh, to the folks that are on the call. And thank you to all the attendees who joined us today. As mentioned at the start of today's webinar, it is being recorded and we'll make it available uh, in the next few days. Uh, this does conclude the webinar and I thank you again for, for joining us and have a great day. Take care. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you.